Welcome to Big Cats Mississippi. Today, I'm gonna show you how live scope can help when the bite is really tough. I'm gonna have picture in picture with active captain. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how I tie a couple flies that have really worked for me. Let's get started. So we've got a couple fish about 19 feet deep, 20 to 25 feet out. And my jig and weight are dropping down to the fish, kind of lose sight. Now the jig and weight are getting closer, dropping on top of the fish and hopefully he'll eat it. It's about to hit him on the head. He's looking at the jig, but now he's trying to eat the weight. When that happens, don't give up. I'm dropping my jig back down to him. Hopefully he'll eat it. He's taking a look at it, taking his sweet time. And later in the video, we'll show what to do when the fish are repulsed by your lure or how to tell when they're repulsed. And when that happens, you need to change lures. Boom, there he is, hit it, on his way to the boat. So one of the ways live scope can really help is it shows you in real time how the fish are reacting to your lures or your presentation. So here's another nice black crappie. This one's about 13 inches long. Several times during the day, I noticed the fish were hitting my weight and I think they were attracted to the chartreuse bead. So what I did was I took off the beads and also I downsized my weight from a quarter ounce to an eighth of an ounce. I think that was making a difference. Um, also my weight was looping around the jig and getting tangled up. Ideally you want your jig at the bottom to be heavier than the weight above it. That way they'll fall without getting tangled up. Let's do the next cast. So here you see the fish about 22 feet out 23 feet deep, there's my jig and weight dropping down to the fish. Sometimes you overshoot like I just did and you just have to correct, drop it back down to them. There the jig is right at the fish, boom, on his way to the surface. If you're a crappie fishing fanatic like I am, you know that there is nothing quite like the thump. That's what makes it worthwhile for us, even if it's cold, hot, doesn't matter. That thump is where it's at. Let's boat flip this guy. This is another nice crappie. This one's a white crappie and it's about 12 and a half inches, I think. They are so much fun to catch and so delicious to eat. This crappie is about 12 and a half inches long. A nice white crappie. All these fish are really healthy. Today I was going to keep a few. So now we've got another fish about 25 feet from the boat. 23 feet deep. Now you see my jig and weight dropping down to the fish. Hopefully he'll get interested. Now he starts to see it. He's moving towards it. Coming up. Taking a look at it. Hasn't quite committed yet. He's still interested. He's not repulsed. He's following the jig now. Got to keep it moving away. Boom, there it was. Set the hook on him. On his way to the boat. Finally made up his mind to eat the jig. It was cold out that day and the wind was ripping too. That makes uh, live scope fishing the most challenging. It's when you've got a lot of weight, uh, when you have a lot of wind, excuse me. So there we go, flipped him into the boat. Another nice eating size crappie. We'll get them measured here in just a second. I think he's about around 13 inches. Most of these fish are in that range. This one's almost 13. I think the smallest one I caught that day was about 11 and a half inches. So here's another fish 25 feet out right on the bottom around 23 feet deep. And now you see my jig I cast it out there 40 feet away. You want to try to cast as close as possible, as accurately as possible. It really saves time, especially with the real big fish. You've only got a couple seconds to get the jig to him. Here he comes, taking a look at it. Boom, there he is. Gosh, when they thump it, it is so exciting. Nothing like setting that hook. So here we go, reeling them up to the surface. Let's boat flip this fish if we can. Gosh, he's a tub. <laughs> this is a little bit bigger one. 
We'll get them measured here in just a second. Big old fat black crappie. I'm thinking he's over 13 inches. Yeah, this is 13 and a half inches. Another nice one. Just beautiful, healthy fish. And I decided to let that one go. I think it looked like it might have been pregnant. And then plus I had enough in the live well already. There's my jig and weight dropping down. Fish you see about 20 feet from the boat. Now a school of crappie swam up and ruined my plan. I think they got distracted. So here's another fish about 35 feet from the boat. Now you see my jig dropping down. I cast it out there like 50 feet away. I definitely overshot it. Now you see the jig coming above the fish. Boom! He did not waste any time. Set the hook on him. At this point, I was kind of dialed into what they were after, uh, which I would have never been without live scope. I would have never known about the fish hitting the, the weight without live scope. So it really does give you an advantage to see what the fish are doing, what they're attracted to. So let's boat flip this guy. Oh my goodness, another tubby crappie. <laughs> so we'll get him measured here. No, it looks like another 13 inch crappie. This is right at 13, another black crappie. Let him go too. On the left side of the screen, you see the bubble trail where, where the fish was released swimming down to the bottom. So when I get started, typically I'll have three or four rods rigged up. Usually I'll start with Mr. Uh, crappie Moglo in pink monkey milk crappie magnet trailer. Here I've got a plain lead head with a pure white crappie magnet trailer. Here I've got a nickel crappie magnet jig head with a monkey milk or it's called show enough. And then here is one of my homemade jigs that I'll use. So I'll rotate through these until I find what they're interested in. Here is a pack of the crappie magnet pink and pearl color, the show enough monkey milk. Here's the crappie max bumblebee in pearl color. Here's the crappie magnet in pure white. The Bobby Garland Slab Slayer in pink and pearl. These have been my go-to baits for the last month or so. So here is some footage from earlier in the day. Kind of had a tough time figuring them out. There's a fish about 13 feet deep, 12 feet from the boat. I've cast it to him. This is the second time. There you see the jig coming down to him. He's just not interested in it. I had cast the same jig to several fish with the same response. So generally a good indication that a change is needed. This fish just was not interested. He's about to swim away. So I tried another lure, tied on a new bait, and this is my first cast. You can see the fish wasn't interested. I actually got five different shots at this same fish without a bite. So here I am about to cast the second time to the fish. See the jig dropping down on top of them. Wasn't interested. Here's a third cast. Now the fourth cast. Kind of overshot at that time. Right on top of them kind of takes a look at it. He's following a little bit. The fish just would not commit. At that point, I was using a pure white uh, crappie magnet trailer. After this cast, I changed to the monkey milk and started getting bit right away. So here's the fifth cast, and he is not interested. So at that point, I said to myself, self, we need to put on a new color. So the best color for the day ended up being the crappie magnet monkey milk color, show enough. And actually, the plain lead head jig worked better than the nickel plated head. The nickel plated head tends to work better when it's sunny out. At least that's the way it is for me. White crappie. Oh my goodness, get up in there. Goodness gracious. Look at that tub. That's got to be over 15 inches. <clears throat> Look at this tubby dude, 14 and a half inch white crappie. I think she's pregnant. 
I'm gonna let her go. Woo! Man, that was a nice white crappie. Okay, I'm cold. I need a cup of coffee. I'm calling it a day. Probably caught 25 fish. I think I kept about 12 or 13. Just enough for a nice meal tonight. Ooh, man, gold. Let's call it a day. Let's check out this live well. Look at that live well. There's about 10 or 12 in there, maybe 13. Okay, now I'm gonna show you in about two minutes how I tie this jig that was working for me pretty well for the last couple of weeks. It's a simple lead head jig, 1 8 ounce or 1 16th ounce and fairly basic, but it does work and catches the fish. Let's get started. I'll be using the Polar Flash Flashaboo, the New Age Chenille and Winter Ice Color, Hemostats, scissors, a whip finisher fly tying tool, a bobbin threader, thread holder, Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, white and pink thread in 210 weight, jigs in 8th and 16th ounce, and a Renzetti 2300 vise. Also, I'm using white natural bucktail hair. Let's get started. First, I like to put a little Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. And then I start a base with the white thread wrapping towards the point of the hook, trimming the excess, and then working back towards the lead part of the jig. Then we take strands of the white bucktail hair and put those on the shaft of the hook, wrap the thread around the base, bring it back to the head. Then I'm going to add about three strands of the flashaboo and I'll wrap that with the thread towards the point of the hook, trim off the excess, work back towards the head of the jig, put a little bit more Sally Hansen's on. Now we're adding the New Age Sunil, starting at the head of the hook and then wrapping the thread back towards the head of the hook now we start wrapping the chenille tightly around the base of the hook towards the head. Once we reach the head, we wrap behind and in front a couple times and trim off the excess. Then using the whip finisher fly tying tool, we tie several knots and complete the process with some Sally Hansen's hard as nails and the jig is done. If you try it, I hope you like it and I hope you catch a lot of fish with it. Thanks so much for watching the video today. It's good to be with you. And if you like the video, please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time. Get out there and go fishing soon.